speak, God. <laughs> For the second time. As I shared, everything in this devotional series is real. It's what you see is what you got. There's no hidden sound booms behind the scenes. There's no lighting coordinators. There's no... Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, I was trying to think of all the different things. Uh, EQs being set up and, you know, monitored and... You know, if you want that kind of professionalism, you know, you know where you can go for it, you know. Church <laughs> and other places too, but the humorous thing is that in sharing emotionals, we're real about it. You know, we're who I am and what I am and what God is and who he is and who you are and what you are. And in so saying, you know, we, I recorded just a few minutes ago reading and I thought this sounds familiar and I stopped and had to redo this because I was reading it and thinking you know that sounds awful familiar but then again <laughs> shouldn't the word of God sound familiar so let's get to it and hear what the Lord would speak to us and share what the Lord may say when you're worried or anxious do you ever get frustrated or anxious it's hard sometimes isn't it to have peace when your circumstances are difficult to have joy when your heart is filled with anxiety? Circumstances, as well as our frustration and anxiety about the concerns of life, can rob us of our joy. The Apostle Paul was well aware of this as he wrote to the believers at Philippi. For he himself was living under house arrest as the prisoner of the Roman Empire. His circumstances were far less than ideal. Yet listen to his words. I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am in. I know how to get along with humble means, and I know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 11, 13. If you'll learn what Paul kept if you'll learn what kept Paul in peace and contentment despite his circumstances, if you'll learn how he handled the anxieties of life, you will have a biblical example and pattern to follow in your life. Philippians 4 lays out several precepts which, if adhered to, will grant us the same victory Paul experienced. First, Paul rejoiced in every circumstance, no matter what it was. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4.4 Here's a command that, if obeyed, will bring victory and peace in the midst of any situation. Why? Because the minute you begin rejoicing, your circumstances cease to control you. You find yourself living above your circumstances as more than a conqueror. Your circumstances become irrelevant to how you are rejoicing or what you are praising for. It is crucial to understand, however, that the command to rejoice does not mean rejoicing in your circumstances. It means rejoicing in your Savior, who is Lord over every circumstance of your life. You could not be in the predicament you were in without the Lord's foreknowledge. He knew it. You did it. There you are. <laughs> God is sovereign. He rules over all. Nothing happens without his permission. Daniel 4, 34, 35. Rejoicing is a matter of obedience, an obedience that will start you on the road to peace and contentment. But at this point, you may be saying, but Kay, I cannot rejoice. I'm just not able. My circumstances are horrible. They're horrific. I understand the overwhelming emotion of such feelings. However, this is where faith, not feelings, enters the picture. We are to live by faith and not by our feelings. Then, like Paul, we can handle anything because of Jesus. Listen to God's word through the apostle again. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 Or to paraphrase it, I can keep on bearing all things through him who constantly infuses his strength to me. Christ's strength, his grace, his power are sufficient to enable us to endure whatever comes our way. Therefore, we can rejoice in the Lord always. When our circumstances are difficult, it is so easy to get uptight and to let this affect our relationships with others, and they are affected. Or we get frustrated and pound things. We set them down hard, or we slam them around, or we stomp around. 
In some way or another, we are tempted to vent the frustration of difficult circumstances on a person or on an object. Chew out the kids, kick the cat, throw out the dog, hide and glare behind the newspaper, tune out the family, turn on the TV, slam the bedroom door, pull the blankets over our head, even take on a scapegoat and blame them for everything that's happening in the world. <laughs> it seems sometimes that whoever is president, whenever it happens, always they want to look at someone at somewhere else in order to vent the frustrations that they might feel at the time. Yet this is not the way to handle frustration. God wants his children to be different. And so we come to the second precept we need to embrace and obey. When things are difficult, God says, let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. The word translated gentle comes from a Greek word difficult to put into English. Some scholars say it could be translated sweet reasonableness, for it refers to a spirit that doesn't get ruffled and react. In other words, it is an equanimity of spirit that is not affected by circumstance. The why and wherefore of sweet reasonableness is twofold. One aspect involves requirement, the other involves enablement. You know, it's getting technical and it's getting detailed and it becomes a Bible study, you know, and so really what she's saying in perspective is that if you let things cause you to react, then you're not acting according to what God would have you to do. But if you act whatever God tells you to do, then you're not reacting to anything around you. It's a very simple principle. Don't react, act. What act simply means is just that. You only do what you're told to do when you're told to do it. Sounds simple. They do that in the military because they want to break down your self-sufficiency to make you sufficient unto your chain of command. But in Christianity, it's the same way. Our chain of command is our dependency upon God. We should never let circumstances dictate how we act because then we're reacting to them. But we should first seek the Lord, ask Him, then act upon what he says. If he doesn't say anything, sit still and know that he is God. Stand still and see the salvation he brings. Don't run with the popular crowd that wants to say, grab your sword and the spirit and start slashing and burning and quoting and doting and claiming and faming and shaming the name of the Lord, to be honest, because if God doesn't tell you to do it, you're out there blasting away on your own. So. A lot of what I see in Christian activity when they're claiming and doing all their wonderful goofiness is just to me like a bunch of little children running around playing with a toy they got. Wow, look what we can do. And in the end, it doesn't leave them better, but sometimes gets them off on a tangent. And God knows what he does to bring them back. But if you act upon what God tells you to do, then you're not reacting to what happens around you. And so it's easier in a lot of ways to just take it to the Lord in prayer or conversation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart means just that. You trust him with everything. You don't lean into your own understanding because he says don't lean into your own understanding. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. So it means in all your ways, in everything you do and say. And then it says, as a promise of that, that he would direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 doesn't get any simpler than that, and it will stop you from reacting to everything around you when your circumstances don't fit what you think you want or what may be easy to pretend or contend that you're, oh, everything's fine because everything around me is fine. Shoot. I only see real Christian, uh, real Christians, I hate that word, real Christians. I only see Jesus alive in a person when their circumstances are the worst and Jesus is the best in them. Then I see the light shine. For the light shineth in darkness. But when it's light, how can you tell the difference? <laughs> so I kind of, I don't say I look forward to, but I rejoice in the adverse conditions as much as the positive ones. All you need to do is what we're doing right now. 
take the time and make the time. Read your Bible, read the Word, study, have a devotion or have an devotion, share it, and then see what God would say for you today and do it. If you're in circumstances, you know what he's saying. Don't react to them. But ask him and then act upon it. Act with him inside you telling you what to do. Don't do it on your own.